meeting will come to order. It is being held virtually using GoToMeeting software. Roll call. Okay, and I'm, when I call your name, please give me your location. I mean, either your city, county, state, <laughs> and uh, just so we can put that into the record. Uh, Don Johnson. Troy, Michigan. Richard Kilmer. Troy, Michigan. Cindy Nurek. Troy, Michigan. Al Petrulis. Is the screen working out? Sunil Sivaraman. Troy, Oakland County, Michigan. Okay. Right. And Pete Ziegenfelder. Troy, Michigan. All right. And then uh, Cynthia had called and she is not feeling well, so she will not be here tonight. Message to visitors, delegations, and citizens. The Troy Traffic Committee is composed of seven Troy citizens who have volunteered their time to the city to be in traffic to be involved in traffic and safety concerns. The stated role of this committee is to give first hearing to citizens' requests and obtain their input, to make recommendations to city council based on technical considerations traffic surveys, establish standards, and evaluation of citizen input to identify hazardous locations and recommend improvements to reduce the potential for traffic crashes. Final decisions on sidewalk barriers will be made by the committee at this meeting. The recommendations and conclusions arrived at on regular items this evening will be forwarded to the city council for their final action. Any citizen can discuss these recommendations before city council. The items discussed at the traffic committee meeting will be placed on the city council agenda by the city manager. The earliest date these items might be considered by city council would normally be 10 days to two weeks from the traffic committee meeting. If you are interested, you may wish to contact the city manager's office in order to determine when a particular item is on the agenda. Persons wishing to speak before this committee should attempt to hold their remarks to no more than five minutes. Please try to keep your remarks relevant to the subject at hand. Please speak only when recognized by the chair. These comments are made to keep this meeting moving along. Anyone wishing to be heard will be heard. We are here to listen and help in solving or resolving your particular concern. The chair proposes the chair moves to propose a resolution to conduct an electronic meeting. The public, body, public bodies may conduct public meetings remotely during the COVID-19 pandemic pursuant to Public Act 228 of 2020. Second. The chair asks for a second. second. I second it. It's been moved and seconded that the Troy Traffic Committee meeting for November 18th be conducted by electronic meeting. Roll call vote. Mr. Johnson. Don Johnson, Troy, Michigan. Yeah, and we don't need to do the location anymore. We could just, yeah, you can just, uh, okay. um, I'll call your name. Yep. Uh, Richard Kilmer. Here. Cindy Nurek. Here. This is this is approving the motion. Uh, aye. Aye. <laughs> uh, Al Petrulis. Aye. Sunil. Aye. And Pete. Aye. So the motion carries. We will hold an electronic meeting. I ask for an approval, a motion to approve the minutes as written from our last meeting. I move to approve the minutes as written from the last meeting. I'll second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded that the minutes from our last public meeting be approved as written. The minutes are from February 19th, 2020. Roll call. Don Johnson. Yes. Richard Kilmer. Yes. Cindy Nurek. 
Yes. Al Petrulis. Yes. Sunil. Yes. <clears throat> and Pete. Yes. The motion carries. The minutes are approved as written. Sorry, I'm just reading my cliff notes. All right. If you're not speaking, you should put your phones on mute so that we don't hear any background noise. And then when you wish to be recognized, take your phone off of mute when I recognize you as being in order to speak. First item on the agenda is item number four, request for a sidewalk waiver at 3223 Helena and 3235 Helena. Do we have any public comments to be read into the record? No public comments for this item. Thank you. Is anybody here to speak on said subject? Hearing none, the chair will entertain a motion uh, that is being recommended by the Public Works Department to approve this waiver request and not requiring the installation of the sidewalks due to the lack of sidewalks in the surrounding parcels, the open drainage ditches, and grading of the area contingent upon the submission of a cash deposit for future construction and to the assured content and participation in any future sidewalk installations. I move that the uh, motion that read by the chair be accepted. I second it. It's been moved and seconded that the traffic committee grants a waiver on the sidewalk requirement for 3223 Helena and 3235 Helena contingent upon the receipt of a cash deposit commensurate with the cost of sidewalk construction. Discussion? Call for a roll I call vote. Call for a vote, Pete? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Don Johnson? Yes. Richard Kilmer? Yes. Cindy Nurek? Yes. Al? Yes. Sunil? We lose Sunil? Uh, yes. I had my microphone mute. <laughs> okay. Uh, Pete? Yes. The motion carries. The sidewalk waiver has been granted at 323. No. 3223 Helena and 3235 Helena. Next item on the agenda is number five request for a sidewalk waiver at 1088 Boyd and 1102 Boyd. Any public comments? Yes, I have one email and I will read that into the record. It is from Richard Jagurski of 12, 1264 Boyd. He called to state that he opposes the waiver and would like to see sidewalk installed on Boyd. He thinks sidewalks would look good and provide an area for people to walk rather than on the road. That was the only one. Okay. Is anybody here to speak in favor or against said motion or item yeah. on the agenda? Yes, I'm here. This is uh, Michael Johnson, the petitioner. And uh, I know Richard ever since high school and everything. And he's kind of around the area. And I like the guy. He's a great guy. He stopped by the house. But uh, it it's really seems impractical to me to have sidewalks there because there's really nothing up and down the area. And it does work out uh, better for the grading to not do it because uh, I've already put in catch basins and everything there. Okay, thank you. The Department of Public Works recommends approving the waiver request, the waiver request and not requiring the installation of a sidewalk due to the lack of sidewalk on the surrounding parcels contingent upon the submission of a cash deposit for future construction and to assure consistent and participation 
in any future sidewalk installation. Consent. That's not consent. Um, the chair proposes that the traffic committee grants a waiver of the sidewalk requirement for 1088 Boyd and 1102 Boyd contingent upon the receipt of a cash deposit commensurate with the cost of sidewalk construction. Do I have a second? I second it. It's been moved and seconded that the traffic committee grants a waiver of the sidewalk requirement for 1088 Boyd and 1102 Boyd contingent upon the receipt of a cash deposit commensurate with the cost of sidewalk construction. Discussion. Hearing no discussion, I call for a roll call vote. Uh, Don Johnson. Yes. Richard Kilmer. Yes. Cindy Nurak. Yes. Al. Yes. Sunil. Yes. And Pete. Yes. It has been moved, seconded, and approved that the track community grants a waiver of the sidewalk requirement in 1088 Boyd and 1102 Boyd contingent upon the receipt of a cash deposit commensurate with the cost of sidewalk construction. Item number six on the agenda, request for a sidewalk waiver at 85 Hickory and 95 Hickory. Um, the Department of Public Works recommends approving the sidewalk waiver request and not requiring the installation of the sidewalk due to the lack of sidewalks in the surrounding parcels, the open drainage ditches and grading of the area contingent upon the submission of a cash deposit for future construction and to assure consent and participation in any future sidewalk installations. Are there any public comments to be read into the record? Yes, there are. There are four emails on this item. Uh, the, the Berry residents at 57 Hickory called to state that they support the sidewalk waiver requested for 85 and 95 Hickory. There is an existing sidewalk on the south side of Hickory already, and they don't feel that another sidewalk is necessary on the north side of Hickory. Second email is says, to whom it may concern, on behalf of my mother, Darlene M. Losey at 111 Hickory, Troy, Michigan 48083, regarding the applicant, Pat Bismack. We have had numerous issues and problems with constant property damage to my mother's ditch area where his drivers and big equipment, semi-trucks and trailers would park all over her ditch and damaged it with tire tracks and ruts from their tires that he never repaired the damage. He tried to get away with improper drainage system, which called a water problem in my mother's basement right after we just did a remodel of the whole interior of the basement for a sewer backup problem from improper street clean out. As far as sidewalk, goes they have fought over and over years and years with this issue to keep the sidewalks off this side of the street they have sidewalks across the street for children to walk to and from school and for walkers of the neighborhood we don't want property damage anymore with digging just like the side of my mother's lot was done by this builder that was not necessary and then did a half job replacing the damaged sod on her property by not smoothing the area and raking the area. They just threw sod on top of the mess they made and left it all full of rocks and tire marks from their digging equipment. I wanted it smoothed out, topsoil put on right, then sod or instant grass seed, but wasn't done right. I hope these houses are complete soon so we can get rid of this builder and his crews. We don't want sidewalks on our side of Hickory. We will be glad when this builder is done. We are tired of the disrespect he has given to our neighborhood and by his workers. The third one, a resident on Hickory who did not want to be identified called to state their opposition to the sidewalk waiver, waiver request. The resident noted that there is sidewalk on one side of Hickory and is used by walkers and bikers rather than using the road. The resident understands why the builder would request the waiver as these are small lots with the homes built close to the front of the lot. The resident feels that sidewalks should go in as sidewalks build better neighborhood relationships. And the final. Email. I live across the street at 94 Hickory. Regarding the waiver, the north side of Hickory between Livernois and Plum has one old sidewalk segment at 133 Hickory. East of Plum and continuing on to Morse Elementary, both north and south sides of Hickory have sidewalks. 
We should expect more new homes on Hickory and more families with young children will move into them. These children will walk to Morse. If they live between Plum and Livernois on the north side of Hickory, they will have to cross the street with no pedestrian crossing intersection available. I've been a resident on Hickory for 20 years and have raised, raised a family here. I have watched office workers shortcut from Stevenson to Livernois using Hickory at highway speed. I've watched Troy PD come down the street at emergency pursuit rates of speed. Even the builder seeking this waiver has had his excavation crew facing traffic and safety issues working on this street. I'm sure you agree that saving one fatality or serious injury is worth investing in safety planning regarding this waiver. But installing 100 feet of modern sidewalk in front of 85 and 95 Hickory will not be the wise investment. Instead, consider the two safety issues here. Kids crossing the street to get to the south sidewalk, fast and congestive traffic on Hickory. You could require builders to improve the sidewalk on the south side of Hickory, bringing them up to code. That would put in place a precedent to improve an existing continuous sidewalk all the way to Moores. But this wouldn't solve the problem of kids crossing the street or the congestion and speeding. To do this, you could cul-de-sac Hickory at Livernoy. A cul-de-sac makes sense. First, the offset light at Kurtz and Livernoy, coupled with left turn access into Hickory creates issues for everybody. It's bad enough that some bus routes now use STAR for access to Livernoy. Next, consider the cinder block wall that exists on both sides of the end of Hickory already. Complete this wall and then make the bus routes use STAR instead of Hickory. If you do this, then you don't have to include Hickory west of Plum, part of first pass snow removal for bus traffic. You eliminate the offset light problems at Kurtz. You positively eliminate through traffic on Hickory, so crossing the street to get to the existing high sidewalk is safer. You increase the real estate value of the street and the neighborhood. You have eliminated the quarter mile straight racetrack from Kirkton to Livernois on Hickory. You've taken proactive steps in mitigating a now highlighted safety issue. Make a larger parking lot for the existing office complexes located on Liber Livernois and Hickory now. This isn't unfounded. Look at Beach Street between Maple and Cherry. It's blocked towards the north end, effectively making a cul-de-sac. By looking at traffic patterns in this neighborhood, you see that if you block Hickory at Livernois, you effectively plan a modern subdivision street layout with limited main street access, but high connectivity within the subdivision. I hope you consider an act on these suggestions. And that was it. Mute. Can I speak, Pete? Yes, sir. Richard. Uh, we had problems with the builder. We had the police down there twice because they blocked the driveways on the north side. And when they dug across and put the sewer line in, they had no signs that said the road closed or anything. Cars were turning around on the west side of Hickory and the driveways on the east side. And the school buses had to back down to Hickory when they come from more school. And on the closer of the street, we we took care of that problem years ago. We had a petition and everybody signed it on the street who lived there at that time, said we want the street to stay open. And I, the sidewalk, I will say waiver the sidewalks. Thank you, Richard. Is anyone here to speak in favor or against? Um, hello, um, good evening, city council member. My name is Gwen Bismack. Um, I'm here representing the request for the waiver at 85 and 95 Hickory um, due to the lack of existing sidewalks on that street currently. Okay, thank you. Do you have anything else to say about the waiver? Um, no, but I think we've addressed most of the other complaints um, by some of the residents on that street with the building department. Okay, thank you. The chair proposes the following motion, that we grant a waiver of the sidewalk requirement for 85 Hickory and 95 Hickory contingent upon a receipt of a cash deposit commensurate with the cost of sidewalk construction. Do I have a second? Second. I second it. Is that Cindy first? Ben, so that was Cindy so. first. It has been moved and seconded that the traffic committee grants a waiver of the sidewalk requirement for 85 Hickory and 95 Hickory contingent upon a receipt of a cash deposit commensurate with the cost of sidewalk construction. Discussion. Hearing no discussion, the chair calls for a vote. 
Uh, Don Johnson. Yes. Uh, Richard Kilmer. Yes. Cindy. Yes. Al. Yes. Sunil. Yes. Pete. Yes. It has been moved, seconded, and approved that the traffic committee grants a waiver of the sidewalk requirements for 95 Hickory and 85 Hickory upon contingent of a receipt of a cash deposit commensurate of the cost of the sidewalk construction. Request for a sidewalk waiver at 1076 Boyd. The Department of Public Works recommends approving the waiver request and not requiring the installation of the sidewalk due to the lack of sidewalk on the surrounding parcels, the open drainage ditches, and the grading of the area contingent upon the submission of a cash deposit for the future construction and assure consent and participation in any future sidewalk installation. Are there any items to be read into the public record? No public comment on this one. Is there anybody here to converse about the sidewalk waiver at 1076 Boyd? Hearing that nobody is here to speak in favor or against, traffic committee chairman recommends the following proposal or motion. Traffic committee grants a waiver of the sidewalk requirements for 1076 Boyd contingent upon the, cash, the receipt of a cash deposit commensurate with the cost of sidewalk construction. Do we have a second? I'll second. second it. Who is second? Al? Al. Okay. It has been moved and seconded that the traffic community commence a waiver of the sidewalk requirements for 1076 Boyd contingent upon a receipt of a cash deposit commensurate, commensurate with the cost of sidewalk construction. Discussion. Hearing no discussion, the chair calls for a vote on said matter. Uh, Don Johnson? Yes. Richard? Yes. Cindy? Yes. Al? Yes. Sunil? Yes. And Pete? Yes. The motion passes. The traffic committee has granted a waiver of the sidewalk requirements for 1076 Boyd, contingent upon the receipt of a cash deposit commensurate with the cost of sidewalk construction. Regular business. Request no parking Lakeside Drive at Shoreline Drive. Detroit police requests that the eyebrow and island area be posted as no parking zone at Lakeside Drive and Shoreline Drive. Does the police department have any comment? No, I think this one's been ongoing for a while though. Okay. Yeah. Are there any I items to be read into the public record? Yeah, there are four emails on this one. So I will read those in. Uh, hello, Traffic Committee of Troy City. We received the meeting notice of Troy Traffic Committee in regarding no parking zone request at intersection of Lakeside and Shoreline. We fully support our Troy Police's request to prohibit parking in the eyebrow area and around the island at Lakeside Drive and Shoreline Drive. We have lived in our Troy Lake subdivision for the last 25 years. We have never had any auto accident, any blockage of city trucks, any crowded parking until last year. And all of a sudden, all these problems became reality to us. We, our neighbors, do not like this new situation at all. After so many years, peaceful and pleasant living here. We have lived in our beautiful, safe, peaceful city, Troy, for longer than 30 years. We sincerely, from the bottom of our heart, appreciate our city engineer, our city police, and city officials for their professional competence, hard work, and responsive efforts on solving all sorts of problems and issues. Uh, next is it states, comments are summarized. We have lived in the home in the eyebrow area for two years and us and our neighbors park there frequently. There has been only one incident and that was simply due to carelessness and someone parking in the worst scenario possible and of course not paying attention while moving their vehicle. Based on the above data, this is not a repeatable high incident situation. Please continue to allow parking in the eyebrow area. 
Uh, next is from a resident in the area who provided the following comments but wished to remain anonymous. We would like to support the Troy Police request to prohibit parking around the island of Lakeside and Shoreline Drive. We are living here since 2005, but recently we have a lot of parking issues, accidents, and noise complaints. Also, there have been times when the island was completely blocked with numerous vehicles making it hard for the actual homeowners of the homes to enter and exit their driveways. With that in mind, we would prefer that parking not be allowed so that further disruptions will not occur. And then the final one, hello, Bill. The previous house owner had four full-size vehicles, three full-size SUVs, and one full-size truck. And they always parked their vehicles on their driveway and never parked their vehicles in front of the neighbor's driveway and the neighbor's houses and the park entrance. For your information, please. Thank you and the members of the communities of the committee, sincerely. Is there, is there anyone here that wishes to speak on the request for no parking on Lakeside Drive at Shoreline Drive? Yeah. Either Pete. for or against. Pete, I've got a yes. comment. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, with the uh, location of the hydrants um, that are fairly remote from that eyebrow, uh, the fire department would be in favor of uh, posting no parking signs in that eyebrow area because uh, if the vehicles were to be blocking our access for apparatus, we'd have a difficult time getting in there to the firefighting operation so fire department would be in favor of the no parking thank you does anybody else wish to speak on the request for no parking at lakeside drive and shoreline drive hearing no one wishes else wishes to speak it is brought back to the committee for consideration the chair will entertain any motion. Uh, the chair moves that the eyebrow area of Lakeside Drive at Shoreline Drive be modified to prohibit all parking within the eyebrow area in and including around the island. Do I have a second? Second. Second. It's been moved, it's been moved and seconded that the eyebrow area of Lake. Side Drive at Shoreline Drive be modified to prohibit all parking within the eyebrow area, including around the island. Discussion? I just feel that this is Sunil. I just feel that given that the, both the police and the fire are supporting this, um, they know our city better than everybody else. And so uh, that's, that's why I'm seconding the motion saying that we should um, make this as a no parking area. Thank you. Yep. Al, you are recognized. Thank you. Uh, just clarification on one of the um, emails that was submitted to, to Bill uh, was the uh, location of one of the emails in, in the address actually within the dead eyebrow? Uh, let's see. Well, I thought they said that they they actually park in that eyebrow. Is that because that's where they live? Uh, let me see if I can get this up here. All right, so we got comments from one of the addresses in the, the eyebrow area uh, in support, one opposed, one supports. That's the one from the area, which is not in. Oh, it's actually in the, yeah. So we have, one, six, one, two, six. Yeah, so the emails are from the residents in the cul-de-sac area. So they all they all have access to it. Thank you. 
Any other discussion? And the chair calls for a vote to re on the motion that the Ivoro area of Lakeside Drive at Shoreline Drive be modified to prohibit all parking within the Ivoro area, including around the island. I second that. Yeah, I think we've got, we've got a second. We already had it. It's been yeah, moved and Pete. seconded, and we're now voting. Okay. Uh, Don? Yes. Richard? Yes. Cindy? Yes. Al? Yes. Sunil? You're on mute, Sunil. Neil, you are on mute. We have a negative response at the moment, meaning no response at all at the moment from Sunil. Okay. Pete? Yes. Uh, does the motion pass? Yeah, we've got five. All right. It has been moved, seconded, and approved that the Ibarrow area of Lakeside Drive at Shoreline Drive be modified to prohibit all parking within the Ibarrow area, including around the island. Oh my. Request for traffic control item number nine at Kirkton Drive and at Star Drive. states um, the lack of an all-way stop control at the intersection of Kirkton Drive and Star Drive creates a hazardous condition. Does the Troy Police have any comments on this proposal? Uh, just from my experience, that's the one farthest east on Star, correct? Um, pretty much everybody turns south, uh, but was the request from a resident or, or where did it come from? Yes, this originally was from a resident. Okay, yeah, I know uh, Pete will probably smile. I hate an uncontrolled intersection, uh, but this one is kind of whatever the citizens want. Okay. Do we have any items to be read into the public record? We do not, and the applicant has actually moved from Troy. So she is no longer here, and she had let me know that she would not be in attendance at the meeting. I'm back, guys. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, we can, Sunil. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Pete? Yes, sir. I live down on Hickory there, and there's only one house to the south on Curtin. But there are about eight new houses. So, uh, the one house is north, I mean, off of Star. There are about eight new houses south of Star. And I think uh, they got a stop sign coming off of a curtain there. And I think that should be, to me, be okay because there's only about six houses east of uh, on Star. There are about six or eight houses down you know, down to the dead end down there. I would have to agree with uh, Richard. Okay, thank you. Does anybody else have any comment or a motion? Uh, Mr. Chair, I do have just a comment. I, I observed that uh, intersection and I agree with uh, Richard and Justin, I th think it's good as it is. Okay. Based, based on the discussion so far, uh, I'd like to move that we leave the uh, intersection as is and make no modification at this time. Second. 
It's been moved and seconded that no change be made at the intersection of Kirkton Drive at Star Drive. Discussion? Hearing that we have no discussion on the topic, the chair calls for a vote that no change be made at the intersection of Kirkton Drive at Star Drive. Roll call, please. Don? Yes. Richard? Yes. Cindy? Yes. Al? Yes. Sunil? Yes. And Pete? Yes. The trust re request for traffic control Bridge Park Drive at Glendale Drive. The applicant request states that the lack of an all-way stop control at the intersection of Bridge Park Drive and Dead Glendale Drive creates a hazardous condition. Does the police department have any comment about this request? I don't have any comments on our radar. Thank you. Are there any items to be read into the public record? Yes, I received one. And then also just a note that uh, after the fact, we did receive a call, traffic engineering received a call from a, a different resident uh, about speeding on Bridge Park. So OHM has set uh, a counter out there yesterday. So they're doing a speed study out there outside of this, this item. So it will, seven day speed study. So it's probably, it'll be, three four weeks before the study comes back so if if there's something that comes out of that then that may come back to you in january may not so we'll see um, the email that was sent in uh, states i would like to offer the following comment regarding the proposal to place a three-way stop sign at the intersection of bridge park drive and glendale drive in troy bridge park drive is a 25 mile per hour 100 percent residential street that serves as the primary ingress and egress to the bridge park subdivision via a stoplight at crooks road bridge park drive currently does not have any yield or stop signs on it between its western terminus at crooks uh, the stoplight and its eastern terminus at whiting drive including no sign at the glendale intersection Glendale Drive is also a 25 mile per hour, 100% residential road that runs north to south and has its southern terminus at Bridge Park Drive. Presently, there is a yield sign on Glendale where it dead ends at Bridge Park. I live in a two story home with a view of the Bridge Park and Glendale intersection. In the five years that I've lived here, I've witnessed low traffic volume with no congestion at this intersection. I have not seen any vehicle traffic accidents or close calls at this intersection either. The vast majority of traffic on Bridge Park Drive flows east to west or west to east with only minimal traffic turning from Bridge Park onto Glendale Drive. Turns from westbound Bridge Turns Park westbound to, Bridge. to northbound Glendale in particular are exceedingly rare. Given the above, I'm not sure what public safety objective would be served by placing stop signs on eastbound and westbound Bridge Park Drive at the Glendale intersection only. Adding a stop sign on Bridge Park Drive at the Glendale intersection would run counter to Bridge Park's position as the main ingress and ingress for the neighborhood. Indeed, because Bridge Park is the primary road, it is the smaller subdivision, smaller subdivision roads running north to south that intersect with Bridge Park that should and already do have yield or stop signs, not Bridge Park. Having said all of this, over the past several years, I have noticed frequent excessive speeding along Bridge Park Drive, especially between Glendale and Newton Drives often in excess of 40 miles per hour. I suspect the speeding occurs for two reasons. One, as mentioned above, Bridge Park Drive is the primary ingress and egress to the neighborhood from Crooks Road where there's a stoplight. And two, Bridge Park Drive is mostly flat and has a relatively straight line of sight. I don't know the primary motivation behind tonight's resident request to add a three-way stop sign at Bridge Park in Glendale, but if one of the goals is to reduce speeding along Bridge Park Drive, and I propose that the residents request be tabled until the feasibility of installing speed bumps along Bridge Park Drive to reduce speeding can be properly evaluated and considered. In my view, of erecting speed bumps along Bridge Park Drive between Glendale and Newton would do more to address the main problem I have personally observed speeding. By contrast, erecting a pair of eastbound and westbound stop signs on Bridge Park Drive at a single intersection, Glendale, would, in my view, attempt to solve something I have never witnessed, traffic congestion, merging, or other non-speeding safety problems associated with this particular intersection. 
If the traffic committee determines that speeding along Bridge Park is the primary concern, then erecting speed bumps or taking other remedial actions should be considered before erecting stop signs. If this is not feasible, then erecting stop signs at this one single intersection should be rejected as insufficient. For stop signs to effectively address speeding along this corridor, multiple signs would be needed to be would need to be erected at virtually every intersection of Bridge Park and a minor road, including at Glendale, Newton, Fulton, and Granger. If the traffic committee determines that stop signs are the best solution, then I believe that this proposal should be combined with a larger proposal for stop signs at all of those intersections to be considered as a single package as a means of strategically addressing the larger speeding problem. <laughs> is there anybody in attendance that wishes to speak in favor or against hello, hello this is james carlson at 898 bridge park and uh my neighbor and i across the street uh across the street from glendale actually requested the the stop signs really due to the speeding issue that we see along along Bridge Park and the email um, that Bill had just read really summed it up and I appreciate the uh, the city's efforts here to go ahead and do the traffic study to uh, see what you know what stop signs would actually do at that you know at that intersection and and now in addition to that um doing the speed study along bridge park and i'd really like to see the results of that that speed study uh because as the the resident mentioned in his email um there are numerous people that that speed down that that uh that street down bridge park because it is a main trunk and and people are just flying in and out of there uh, daily on a daily basis um, so in a in a broader sense as he stated in that email if we are going to do stop signs and and see that that would you know control the speed better down bridge park then perhaps stop signs at each one of these intersections would would definitely help out and in the adjoining neighborhood that's to the east of us there um, that does not have sidewalks on it. I do see a lot of you know four-way stops or at least two stop signs in one direction, um, kind of limiting limiting the speed uh, through those uh, through those streets in that neighborhood at least. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak in favor or against item number ten? Uh, Traffic control devices at Bridge Park Drive and Glendale Drive. Hearing none, the chair would like to remind the committee that the chair is in favor of a traffic control device at all intersections to define which is the through street and which is the stop street. And the chair is always in favor of stop signs over yield signs but based on the conversation and the last several and the emails that were read into the record, um, a stop sign is an inappropriate traffic control device to control speeding. Uh, it historically happens from traffic engineers who have been to our uh, committee meetings that have stated that a stop sign placed in an inappropriate spot to slow traffic down actually speeds traffic up as they're witnessing the stop sign at the intersection and saying, why is there a stop sign here? And then they speed up to get to wherever they're going because they were inadvertently slowed down. So a stop sign to control speed is inappropriate, even though I'm highly in favor of traffic control devices. Having stated that, the chair will entertain any motion. Hey. Uh, yes, Richard. They're going to have a study on speed. I like to table this if it's all possible till January, so we know what the speed is on the streets and everything. That's my opinion. We should table it. Are you motioning to table it? I make a motion. We should table it because we're going to. If we don't, 
it's going to come back in January, then we got to do it all over again. We might as well just table it right now and wait till January to do it. Okay. Do we have any? I second, um, Richard's, I, I second Richard's motion to uh, table it's, this until get the results. It has been moved and seconded that we table the request for a traffic control device at Bridge Park Drive at Glendale Drive until our January traffic committee meeting. Any discussion? Yeah, this is James again. So when you guys table something and wait for results for the speed study, does that just entail what was originally on, you know, for the subject here for the stallway stop at Glendale and Bridge Park? Or yes. are there other countermeasures then that could be discussed at that time? Or do we actually have to uh, put in another request for some kind of traffic control along Bridge Park Drive? I defer to Bill. Yeah, um, I can speak to that. Um, the One of the things we would have our consultant do is once they acquire the data is then to look at it because what I'll, I'll talk to them tomorrow just to, to say that one of the things is if they do find that there are excessive speeds there that are correctable with, with some type of physical measures to include that discussion in the report as far as one of the simple simple measures that can be used if you park on the street. Traffic calming is you either deflect right. the road vertically or horizontally. If you want to deflect it horizontally, you park on the road. It's mm -hmm. a cheap, cheap way to do it. Um, a lot of people don't like parking on the road, and but that is a that is an effective way to slow traffic down. Um, speed humps right now, we, we are working on a draft policy that has yet to go to city council. So, and even if say speed humps were a recommendation, they you wouldn't put them in in the winter. It would be a spring summer type thing because one of the big issues right now with the speed hump policy is who pays for them. Um, mm -hmm. Tip. Typically, they would be done under a special assessment where residents pay for them. And a lot, most communities either uh, participate partially, say one third, two thirds. Some communities charge a hundred percent to the residents, and then others will pay for them. So it's it's kind of up in the air that part of it. I mean, they're not terribly expensive. They're twenty five hundred to five thousand a piece, and a road like Bridge Park, you put them every 200 to 500 feet, so it, it would require several speed humps. So, but it would be the cost would then be split by all the the properties fronting on Bridge Park, so the the per unit cost gets to be somewhat low typically. Mm -hmm. So, but but we're not there yet because right now the standard we've been using is the Road Commission standard, which is an 85th percentile of 35 or more and a thousand vehicles a day. Um, offhand, I don't know what type of volumes are on Bridge Park, but a thousand vehicles a day is, is fairly significant, and 85th to 35 or more is is very high. We did a quick look of the studies we've done. I don't remember it was 12, 15, 18 studies in the past three years, and there were probably four roads that would have met all of that criteria. But the criteria we're looking at in a draft policy is much lower than that. We're looking at potentially an 85th to 31 which is very similar to what Rochester Hills uses of uh, six miles an hour increase over the posted speed limit and then 400 vehicles a day. So under that okay. lower criteria, a road like Bridge Park would most likely meet it. So yes, it may, that makes it more may, sense. Yeah, it may be, and it, it's, it's a draft right now. It's an internal review. Um, City Council has not seen it yet. So it's something they're looking for and something that, because there's some costs associated with it, 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 it may be part of our budget discussions coming up here in the new year to see if it's something that we would just provide funding within the budget, either for a portion of it or all of it, or mm -hmm. if it just be, if it stays as 100% resident, because that's the old policy back prior to like about 2010, uh, physical calming measures were, were paid for 100% by the residents. Uh, we only we have one speed hump in the city, um, uh, Walnut Hill or Chestnut Hill, one of those roads right at the corner. They're kind of the quarter, quarter circle roads um, uh, over by Adams. 
and that was a singular installation so not quite how they should be put in because they should be put in in multiples in order to uh, correct speeds so uh, we've got some work to do there but the first thing that when we do with any speeding concern is we do have a speed study conducted because uh, that gives us the information that we need to to move forward and if it also gives us something to talk with uh, Justin and the traffic safety unit if it's uh, there's a time of day day a week where their speeding seems to be more prevalent and they can they can target those areas with direct enforce enforcement much better they can utilize their staff to uh, a uh, much more effective and efficient way rather than just sitting out there at some random time. And the problem with mm -hmm. that is that the police are busy. And so what they do is they, they target those areas um, when their officers are not on higher priority calls. Um, Cause most areas speeding is most prevalent during peak hour morning and evenings. Um, with the pandemic, we've seen some interesting things where they the rush hour is kind of non-existent a lot of days and it it, it, right. it it spread out and one of the things we had assumed is that with lower traffic volumes we would see higher speed but some of the more recent studies we've done we've not seen that so i'll be curious to see what bridge park comes back uh like and then james and um mm -hmm. skyler who, who sent the email oh, i i would right. i would be sharing i'd be sharing those uh that speed study results with you guys so you can take a look at it and then we can discuss more after that. So I, I would anticipate that we'll have that back in, I would think by hopefully mid-December and that that may be the only issue. And I, I guess the only issue I take with the, the motion as, as stated was January, because I, I can't guarantee you with a hundred percent that that would be back um, for the January meeting. I, I would, per, my preference would be the, that the, the motion be amended to say at the, the next available traffic committee meeting after the stu the speed study has been completed. Okay. From, we, with a, the, uh, from a parliamentary point of view, um, the only thing we can do at the moment is table the motion, is, is either vote up or vote down the motion or append the motion uh, to table the, the discussion. If when the speed study comes back, we have to do, decide to do something with this particular item. Uh, tabling it means that it will come back to a future meeting yep. and, and, and be resolved. So the chair will entertain any motion to amend proposed tabling of the traffic control bridge at Bridgeport Drive, at Glendale Drive from the January meeting or to move to the January meeting. I make a motion that uh, we table it to January meeting. The, 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 that, yeah. that's, that's what it was already moved and seconded. And then we had discussion on it. And now I'm, and the city is recommending that we reconsider the motion at the first available traffic committee meeting after the speed study is performed. Completed. Completed. Speed study is completed. And it may be January. It may be, they, they've got the counters out there now. But with the pandemic and everything going on, it's nothing is time certain. And Cindy like is doing the, the appropriate Thing to to wave so that I may recognize your signature. Sorry, yes, I'd like to make a motion that we amend the motion on the table um, so that it is brought to us after the speed study is done at the next meeting after the speed study is done instead of in January. Sorry, I'm going to clean that up for me, Bill. <laughs> yep. It's been moved and seconded that we amend the motion on the table to table this motion to the first available traffic committee meeting after the speed study is complete. Discussion? Did we have a second on that, Pete? Yes, we did. Uh, it was actually Richard. Okay. Or it might have been Al, I'm not sure now at the moment. 
So, Bill, I just had a real quick question. This is James again. With the, uh, you're saying there's some criteria that Bridge Park has to meet, and currently, it, that that criteria it, it has to be a thousand vehicles on on Bridge per Park day. Drive per, per day per day. Okay, and you said, and help me understand that you were there's a draft or something like that in the works here to try and amend that to something that you see in Rochester, Rochester Hills, where it brings that criteria down to 400 a day. Correct. Okay. And when, when, when would you expect that to actually, um, I, 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 I can't, the city that, or, I, I don't, I, that I don't know. Okay. It's, I've got it. I've got it drafted, but it's an in internal review. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion? It has been moved and seconded that we amend the motion to table the discussion to the January traffic committee meeting to be the first available traffic committee meeting after the speed study is complete. Roll call vote, please. Don. Yes. Richard. Richard. Yeah. yeah. Cindy. Yes. Al. Sunil. Yes. Pete. Yes. The motion has successfully been amended to officially state for us to table the request for a traffic control device at Bridge Park Drive and Glendale Drive to the first available traffic committee meeting after the speed study has been completed. Any discussion on this motion? The chair recognizes the Troy Police Department. If the residents are still listening. Uh, Bill, when is that study completed? I don't know. They've got counters out there today, so they're going to run a seven-day study, or yesterday, so they probably started data collection today or maybe oh. yesterday afternoon, so it's going to be next Wednesday probably before they pull them and then it's usually a week two weeks for them to go through all the data and then I got to add some text for them to add to their study so it, it, it's typically another two weeks so I, I tell people don't expect anything for at least a month oh, so that, no that that yeah that puts us into almost mid-December and then with the holidays that's why January is kind of concerning and then with the pandemic if they have anybody that goes out um I just don't know that I can guarantee that we will shoot for that, the January meeting, but I just can't guarantee that we'll hit that. That's all right. I was going to let them know. Uh, I'll, I'll keep an eye out for the counters and uh, have in a couple of weeks, uh, one of my officers take a look at that street. As, uh, as you said, with COVID, our traffic patterns are just off. We can't guess anything. So, But I'll, I'll have an officer go over there and take a look in a couple of weeks. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. The motion on the table, if there is no other discussion, we, I will call for a vote that the request for a traffic com control device be tabled until after the speed study is completed and the next available traffic committee meeting commences. I'll, roll call vote, please. Uh, Don Johnson. Yes. Richard. Yes. Cindy. Yes. Al. Yes. Sunil. Yes. Pete. Yes. The motion passes to table the item for the traffic control at Bridge Park Drive and Glendale Drive until the next available meeting after the speed study is completed. Item number 11, request for traffic control, Cliffside Drive at Highbury Drive. Um, the petitioners state that the lack of an always stop control at the intersection of Cliffside Drive and Highbury Drive creates a hazardous condition. The chair would like to emphasize that they are in favor of traffic control devices and stop signs over yield signs. Is there any item to be read into the official record. 
There is. There are four. Two City of Troy Traffic Committee. Always stop control at Cliffside Highbury Drive. Currently, there is a two-way stop sign on Highbury Drive with an orange sign below the stop sign. Cross traffic does not stop. I've been a resident of Troy for 50 years and have lived on Highbury for over 40 years. I can view this intersection from the six windows in the front of my house. I just want to share the history of the current sign with the committee. In the earlier, perhaps mid-1980s, the same request was made to the Traffic Safety Committee to change the two-way stop sign to a four-way stop. Reasoning, lots of kids, lots and lots of kids walking to and from law school, just lots of traffic through the sub. Safety patrol kids were stationed on all the corners on Highbury leading to the school, and even today, minus COVID, it is a major bus stop for the middle and high school students. Note, there was no subdivision built to the south of us at the time of the request. Safety Traffic Committee advised us at the time of the following, a four-way stop sign would slow, slow traffic down at the corners. Sounds ironic. Slowing down the traffic would probably lead to more accidents at the intersection. Most of the people who ignore the stop sign are usually residents of the subdivision. Recommended, adding the second sign below, cross traffic does not stop. Additional note, the Troy police used to regularly park on Highbury or on Cliffside and observe driving habits and issue tickets accordingly. But the TPD doesn't do that anymore. They just put up temporary speed control signs as a reminder. I do not know the reason or who is making the request for the change. The information was not shared on the agenda. But here are a few things I've observed in the last number of years, and perhaps the committee should know regarding the traffic on Highbury. More children are being driven to and from school and not walking as much in previous years, thereby causing even more traffic at the intersection. The very long construction time to complete the widening of John R. Road helped decrease traffic on Highbury. Closing of WAS due to COVID also helped decrease the traffic. In the last three, maybe four years, new residents have moved in to houses on three of the four corners of the intersection, which is great and perhaps unfamiliar with the traffic patterns. Don't know if this info is important, but just wanted to share with the committee. Keep the sign the way it is. It seems to work. Next, I am resident near the Cliffside and Highbury intersection and would like to encourage you to highly consider the request for an always stop at the intersection. Cars speed down cliffside aren't paying attention to cross traffic or kids in the neighborhood and it's a very high risk safety concern. I grew up in the subdivision before moving back to start my own family and would greatly appreciate the added measure to protect all of my neighbors. Next, I sincerely hope the committee will approve a much needed always stop at the corners of cliffside and Highbury Drive. My husband and I live on Jeffrey Drive. We have seen, heard, and been involved in too many close calls of collisions. The sign to let drivers know that not everyone stops has helped very little. I find myself stopping no matter which direction I am traveling because too many people don't stop and some barely yield. At times, this becomes more dangerous because the other driver thinks I am stopping so they don't, even when they have to stop, even when they have the stop sign and I have the right of way. There is a bump in the road on cliffside as well, which you would think would cause drivers to reduce their speed, but it doesn't. We often hear vehicles thumping when they hit it without slowing down. Please help keep my family and our neighbors safe by installing always stop signs. And finally, one thing to point out is that when the traffic study was done, there was absolute, absolutely zero traffic to and from Wass Elementary, plus a lot of people working from home, way different than the Standish-Tucker intersection that did get okayed for the four-way stop signs. Does the Troy Police Department have any comments on this issue? Again, if we're not doing a speed study, I'll have one of my officers take a look for speed, but I don't think we have any high incidences of crashes or incidents in that location. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody here wishing to speak on said item, either for or against? Hearing that nobody is here to speak on said item, it's brought back to the traffic committee for consideration. Once again, the chair is very much in favor of traffic control devices at all intersections and that stop signs are our preferred method over yield signs. Hey. Yes, Richard. I would like to say we should go with the residents one. Not there. We don't. We get reports from the police, Bill and all of them. 
They're there two or three days. The residents live there 365 days. They know what's going on in their subdivisions. And the schools are not in session right now, but when they're in session, there's a lot of traffic. And I live on Hickory. When the school's in session at Morris, there's traffic. So I make a motion we put four ways in there. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the intersection at Cliffside Drive at Highbury Drive be modified from stop signs in the Highbury Drive approach to all-way stop control at the intersection of Cliffside Drive and Highbury Drive. Discussion. Al. Um, my, my observation of that intersection, I... I felt that the current situation with the two stop signs that have the caution underneath saying that there's uh, that the uh, traffic does not stop, um, I think is purely sufficient. I think adding this, the other stop signs is more of a nuisance than anything else. And I'll, uh, the one comment from the one email actually was kind of interesting because the complaint was that they added stop signs and nothing changed. So if you expect that you're going to put a four-way in there and something's going to change, probably nothing will change either. So the, the person advocating for the stop signs admitted that the stop signs didn't work. So I, I personally feel from the way I, I go around that intersection, I think it's sufficient as it is right now. Thank you. Any other comments or discussion from the committee? Hearing yeah, that there are no other, yes. Sorry, I tried raising my hands, but that's okay. Um, so I, I just want to point out that even though we had four residents uh, talk to us about this particular situation, 75% wanted a four-way stop sign. And even the other gentleman agreed to the fact that this was an issue during school times because there are kids coming down there and i don't know whether that's a bus stop i think he mentioned there's a it's a bus stop for middle school kids too and as we have done before that's a reason why i think it's better to have a four-way stop there rather than a yield or just a stop so just my viewpoint thank you we're not seeing your picture sunil so you're going to have to speak up when you wish to speak um my camera is yeah. on I will speak up too. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion? And the chair calls for a vote that the intersection of Cliffside Drive at Highbury Drive be modified from stop signs on the Highbury Drive approach to always stop control at the intersection of Cliffside Drive at Highbury Drive. Roll call, please. Done. Yes. Richard. Yes. Cindy. Yes. Al. No. Oh. Sunil. Yes. Pete. Oh. Yes. The motion has been approved that at the intersection of Cliffside Drive at Highbury Drive be modified from a stop sign at the Highbury Drive approach to an all-way stop control at the intersection of Cliffside Drive at Highbury. Item number 12 on the agenda, request for traffic control. Trevino Drive at Garrett Street and Willow Grove Drive. The petitioner states that uh, the lack of a stop sign on the Garrett Street approach to the intersection of Trevino Drive and Willow Grove Drive, no, Willow Grove Drive creates a hazardous condition. Are there any items to be read into the official record? There are. There are two emails that I read. Uh, oh, there is one stop sign for this four-way intersection. It is located on the southwest corner of Willow Grove. I brought this to the attention of the city a number of months ago. Sometime after that, the city paid an independent company to evaluate the intersection. I understand that a recommendation was made to place additional stop signs. This was a few months ago. Now I understand that there will be a meeting at City Hall to further discuss the need for additional stop sign or signs. This has been going on for five or six months and still no sign. 
not even a temporary sign. I've watched cars blast through the intersection on a regular basis. I've witnessed close call car accidents as well as some kid on his bike with a close call. The fact that this simple safety measure has gone to an independent consultant is now going to a committee meeting is ridiculous. I am sure I will receive a standard reply on how the city is following protocol. If God forbid there's an accident, I will reach out to the insurance companies. They can have at it with Troy. At least the city will take comfort knowing they have followed protocol. Second, I am writing in response to the notification about the proposed stop sign at the crossing of Trevino and Garrett intersection with Willow Grove. I fully support adding a stop sign on Garrett. I was surprised to see two different full reports on the subject. I skimmed them but did not dive into the details. A stop sign seems like a common sense solution. I'm a mechanical engineer and have not studied traffic flows. However, I have personally observed several instances of traffic moving from Garrett to Trevino without stopping or slowing down at the Willow Grove intersection. And the vehicles seem to be traveling well above the speed limit. As a father of four kids, ages 13 to 7, that worries me. I was surprised there was not a stop sign on Garrett already, but I presumed it would be installed as construction progressed. Thank you for your consideration of these comments. Does the Troy Police Department have any comments about this proposal? Was there a stop sign that was supposed to be installed at that intersection? And as Willow Grove slated to be paved. Chair recognizes Bill. Uh, there's any new subdivision. There's no requirement for the signs. We take we take cash fees for certain signs. Um, Willow Grove is not going to be paved. We just the big sanitary sewer job out there, and the residents that live on Willow Grove did not want it to be paved. They just wanted to go back as gravel, so that road was was more or less centered in the right of way now after the, with the sewer job. So it is gonna stay a gravel road. Um, Trevino and Garrett are offset slightly as well. I think it's 10 to 12 foot offset. Um, and the request was to add a stop sign on the Garrett, the new Garrett approach, Oak Forest three and four are new subdivisions that are, that are being built on that side. And that's where the new access is coming from onto Willow Grove. So, and then there's uh, the other Oak Forest to the north. So there's uh, essentially three new subdivisions on that side of the road with access to Garrett. So the request was to, to have a stop sign. There's an existing stop sign at Trevino because before it was kind of a T intersection. There, the road, Willow Grove goes a few little bit to the south, but it doesn't continue to the south. So it's, it functions more like a T intersection and, and it's kind of an offset T. Yeah. I Hate an uncontrolled intersection. I I would say that needs to be a stop sign. Care. Thank you. Is there anybody here at the meeting wishing to speak in favor or against the traffic control device? Hearing none, we bring it back to the committee for discussion or for um, discussion. The chair will entertain any motion. The chair will make a motion that the intersection of Trevino Drive at, and Garrett Street at Willow Grove be modified to add a new stop sign on the Garrett Street approach to Willow Grove Drive while, the, while, retrain, or, uh, while retaining the existing stop sign on the Trevino Drive approach. I second, second. that motion. It's been moved and seconded that the intersection of Trevino Drive, Garrett Street at Willow Grove be Willow Grove Drive be modified to add a new stop sign on the Garrett Street approach to Willow Grove Drive while retaining the existing stop sign on Trevino Drive approach. Discussion. The chair would like to ask uh, Justin, as the representative from the Troy Police Department, are you indicating that you would prefer an always stop at that intersection? Or is the motion that has been presented good enough to satisfy the Troy Police Department? I'm happy with the uh, motion. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, the chair calls for a vote 
for the motion on the table that the intersection of Trevino Drive, Garrett Street at Willow Grove Drive be modified to add a stop, a new stop sign on the Garrett Street approach to Willow Grove Drive while retaining the existing stop sign on the Trevino Drive approach. Roll call, please. Don. Yes. Richard. Yes. Cindy. Yes. Al. Yes. Sunil. Yes. Pete. Yes. <clears throat> the motion carries. The intersection of Trevino Drive, Garrett Street, at Willow Grove Drive be modified to add a new stop sign on the Garrett Street approach to Willow Grove Drive while retaining the existing stop sign on the Trevino Drive approach. Item number 13 on the uh, agenda. Request for traffic control, Napier Drive at Country Drive. The uh, petitioner states that the lack of a stop signs at the intersection of Napier Drive and County Drive creates a hazardous condition. He reports that the intersection of Napier Drive at Drenton Drive has an all-way stop and is a mirror image of Napier Drive at County Drive and should be posted the same way as an always stop controlled intersection. Does the city have any items that need to be read in to the record? I do, I have one email. I'm writing to express strong support in favor of the installation of stop signs at the intersection of Napier and Country. My wife, Linda Hildebrandt, also supports this request. We live around the corner from this intersection at 1275 Joshua, but are within 300 feet of the intersection. We travel this intersection frequently by both car and foot. As a cut through from Crooks to the Forest Park subdivision, country is frequently driven at speeds well over the posted 25 mile an hour speed limit. While driving, it is at times dangerous to turn from Joshua onto country. While walking, it takes more caution than normal intersections to cross country at the intersection. The installation of stop signs at the proposed intersection will at least slow down traffic for a while and hopefully cut down on drivers who apex the corner. While traffic is lighter due to COVID-19, the issue with speeding on country is of no lesser concern than it was before. In some cases, it appears to be worse since drivers are not contending with other traffic that would prompt or cause them to slow down. Thank you. Does the Troy Police Department have any comment on the traffic control device request? Justin, you have frozen. Um, that's not good. So, Justin, you may have to um, rejoin because your image has frozen and we don't hear you. Oh, almost. There you are. Lost your voice. Okay. I believe you said that the... Troy Police Department has no additional item to add. Is there anyone on the call that wishes to speak in favor or against the traffic control device? Yeah, my name is Dale Williams from Troy, Michigan, and I live at the intersection of uh, Napier and Country. Um, speed is definitely a concern. Uh, I've lived at the intersection for about 26 months, and uh, in addition to speed, I just see it as an unsafe place to be. I, I witness that there are near misses. I witness that there are uh, bicyclists who are almost victims of people who drive seemingly with no regard for uh, the intersection itself. Um, I know that if I back out of my driveway, if someone wants to come down country and just uh, go out of their way to go around my car, they will do that. Same thing if I'm going to back in, they don't even wait uh, for me to clear the apron on my driveway before uh, going around. And um, I've not understood why we have a mirror image T at Napier and Denton, but not at Napier and Country. Uh, Country Drive kind of serves as a free flowing half mile between Crooks and, uh, and, and Coolidge, right? You can go about halfway through with, without, without stopping whatsoever, without the need to slow down. Uh, in many cases, without the need to pay attention to what's going on. Thank you. Is anybody else 
on the call wishes to speak about item number 13 for the traffic control device? Hearing none, we bring it back to the um, table for consideration. Although the chair has a question for the city on whether or not um, either of these streets are what we would consider feeder streets. I think that's the term. Well, a country would be, I mean, that's kind of a secure, roundabout way to get out to uh, Crooks Road. And Napier is kind of the connection between the, the two east-west roads. Okay. The chair will entertain any motion. I'd like to suggest B, resolve that the intersection of Napier Drive at uh, Country Drive be modified to an always stop sign at the intersection of Napier and Country Country Drive. So it's B as written. I second that motion. It's been moved and seconded that the intersection of Napier Drive at Country Drive be modified to an always stop control at the intersection of Napier Drive and Country Drive. Discussion? Sunil. Yeah, I just feel that um, better than yield sign and always stop would be better. We've had two of the people who live there speak about it and uh, uh, just a quick question has and the police haven't seen anything much happening, but I still think um, having an always stop sign is better than a yield sign. That's why I picked option B. Okay. Any other Thank comments? You. Thank you. The chair is in favor of stop signs over yield signs because yield signs leave ambiguity of whom was supposed to yield where a stop sign removes all ambiguity of that action. Any other comments? Seeing none, the chair calls for a vote that the intersection of Napier Drive at Country Drive be modified to always stop control at the intersection of Napier Drive at Country Drive. Roll call vote, please. Don. Yes. Richard. Yes. Cindy. Yes. Al. Yes. Sunil. Yes. Pete. Yes. The motion has been approved that the intersection of Napier Drive at Country Drive be modified to an always stop control at the intersection of Napier Drive at Country Drive. Thank Item you. Item number four. You're welcome. Item number 14, request for no parking. Grayfield Road and Weatherby Drive to south. Um, the petitioner requests that the current time limited no parking zone on the west side of Grayfield Road be from Weatherby Drive to south property line of 1740 Weatherby Drive be modified to prohibit parking at all times. The request is based primarily on construction vehicles parking along the west side of Grayfield Road to the load and unload equipment and the damage that is being done to their property. I surmise that I'm not saying that street name correctly. No, I think it's correct. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any items to be read into the official record? Yeah, there's two emails. Dear Traffic Committee, my name is Megan Fisher, and I am the owner resident at 1810 Witherby, Troy, 48084. My house resides on the southeast corner of Grayfield Road and Witherby Drive. We already have a no large truck sign on my side of Grayfield, and I also have a no parking during school loading and un unloading times in front of my house. Additional signs seem unnecessary. Due to the placement of my house, I am unable to have a driveway in front of my house or a garage. And although I try not to park in the street, there are times I do need to do so. I am requesting, so I am requesting we keep things as is. More restrictions around my home would potentially cause more issues for my already restricted parking options for myself and any guests of myself and neighbors. Thank you for your consideration. To whom, to whom it may concern, my name is Daniel Gaber. My address is 1726 Weatherby Drive. 
I received the notification about the traffic committee meeting November 18th, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. regarding agenda item 14, request for no parking Grayfield Road, Witherby Drive to South. I understand that the request is to modify the time limited no parking zone to prohibit parking at all times on the west side of Grayfield Road. As an affected neighbor, I have no problem with this request. The following is a related issue in light of the current request. The committee might want to consider how the nearby restricted parking sign on Witherby creates some amb ambiguities and endeavor to make sure that the new sign is designed to clearly establish the area of enforcement. I suppose that this might also be received as a new request to modify the Witherby sign for clarity. The sign in question is a restricted parking sign in the parking strip between our house, 1726 Witherby Drive, and our neighbor to the east, 1740 Witherby Drive. I believe that the intent of the restriction is to mitigate overflow parking and event parking for Pembroke Elementary. The sign specifies the times of enforcement, 815 to 915 a.m., 315 to 415 p.m. school days. It does not define the area of enforcement. Is the area of enforcement from the location of the sign eastward to the corner, how far to the west of the sign? Do I have an exemption for our cars and the cars of guests? If not, can I request an exemption? Please find attached photos of the sign. There's a close-up of the sign, and there are two photos to establish the location. Thank you for your consideration. Does the Troy Police Department have any comments? for item number 14, Grayfield Road, Weatherby Drive to South. Uh, no. Thank you. Is there anyone on the line that wishes to speak in favor or against the request for no parking? Item number 14 on the agenda. Hi, can everyone hear me? Yes. Hey, so my name is Sergey. I live at 1740 Withery. I'm the person that I guess you call the petitioner. Um, so I, we, my parents first noticed and were bothered by all the construction vehicles that park specifically on, I believe it's the west side, our house side of Grayfield. Um, on Witherby itself, it's actually hasn't been a problem since we added the uh, part, no parking signs during school hours, um, but on Grayfield is where we have um, vehicles parked that are, you know, contractors and such servicing houses in on the Birmingham side of, uh, so it'd be Grayfield and um, what's the next road? I believe it's Derby. Correct. So in my opinion, I think that it should be obviously always no parking because I don't see any reason why that specific part of the road, you know, needs to have anyone park on it. I don't ever see anyone else parking on it, like any personal vehicles. Um, I did hear about the our neighbor to the east across from Grayfield mentioned, you know, she has issues parking and, you know, for her and, you know, visitors and such. But I can't say that I've really seen because she's on the other side. And I, I mean, I'm not talking about that side on our side. It's literally never any personal vehicles parking there, ever. Okay, thank you. Um, I would like to ask the city if they have any idea how long is the construction going to go on so that the construction vehicles are the issue and whether or not the petitioner thinks that once the construction is completed, the issue disappears. Because once we put up the signs um, based on how the resolutions are written, they're there forever. I, I don't have an answer to that because it, to the south is Birmingham. So I, I don't know, but, but there is a lot of... Uh, redevelopment in the older areas where the smaller houses are being purchased and demolished and large houses going in very prevalent in Birmingham and some areas of Troy. Um, not that I'm aware of in this area of Troy, but in Birmingham, most definitely. So how long it would last, I, I have no idea. Okay, thank you. Oh. 
stop that. All right, cool. It was it was it was acting up on me. I was about to freeze. Sunil. All right, Mark, this is just a question. Can we put a temporary sign for construction? Say no construction vehicles, or is there any anything that you can do temporarily until let's say the construction is until the construction is done? So question is addressed to the chair, but to Bill. So I guess I would ask Justin, is that, that enforceable? We do have enforceable temporary parking orders, but they come from the city and um, not us. Yep. But could you could you enforce that based on construction traffic? You'd have to identify them as construction. That would be the issue. Uh, you know, so a lot of workers are driving their personal vehicles to the site, and yep. yeah, have a definition of construction vehicle, and you start getting into commercial vehicle, and that would be a slippery slope, and it would be difficult to define. I, I would agree with that. Thank you. Al? The question I have is, are, since we have a sign that says they're not allowed to park at certain hours, are these construction vehicles parked during those restricted hours? And if they are, should they not be, then, then it's become more of an enforcement issue, a parking violation issue. I'm sorry, is that a question for me? It's a question for anybody, actually. But yeah, maybe since you're there, you're, you're there, you're the eyes on the ground there. Uh, are those vehicles parked there during the restricted hours? From what I've seen, I'm not 100% sure, but I want to say yes, um, at least for the morning one. Um, I asked my parents about it, too, and they mentioned that the noise begins pretty early. So it would be um, during the morning part of it, because the, the no parking is, is the morning and the afternoon for the school. Um, but they typically will stay there in the morning. I think they usually leave by the, the afternoon time, though. Okay, thank you. The chair will entertain any motion. Pete? Hey. Yes, sir. Richard. I look at the pictures of the construction vehicles. I would like to ask Sergeant, I look at a vehicle, it got cones on the front, but I see a vacant vehicle with uh, no, it's a trailer, no cones in back of it, or warn people are out there. Aren't they supposed to put them out? Well, if they're parked legally, they don't have to put out any cones. Um, uh, I'll have my, one of my officers take a look there uh, this week to see if we can see any violations yeah. for current signage. But uh, when you start getting into road closures and, and what construction crews can do, I mean, the city energy or could probably speak better to that as far as, you know, what barricades need to be going, notifications, signage, flagmen. There are all these standards. A lot of times you'll see a, 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 a like landscape crew park their truck and throw a cone out. If they're parked legally, it's not required. It's just a courtesy and maybe even an insurance coverage thing. Um, but if they're parked legally, they're parked legally. Thank you. The chair will entertain any motion. Hearing none, the chair moves that the existing time limit The chair moves that the existing time limit no parking zone on the west side of Grayfield Road be modified to prohibit parking at all times from Weatherby Drive to South Property Line of 1740 Weatherby Drive. I second that motion. It's been moved and seconded that the existing time limit, no parking zone on the west side of Grayfield Road be modified to prohibit parking at all times from Weatherby Drive to South Property Line of 1740 Weatherby Drive. Discussion? Al. I, I personally don't know I have a problem with that uh, motion. Other than that, um, looking at the type of vehicles, at least from the photos, um, I can almost guarantee you they're going to park there anyways. 
until they get, until it's enforced. They're, they're, this is the, the one picture. It's a landscaping company. They, they're, they're not going to care. So I think, um, I mean, if, if the resident obviously requests this, uh, I, I respect that. But I, I think this is really uh, one, either it's a temporary issue, as you know, we call this construction, but, the, but the, the photo actually is landscaping. So it's just, these are your, who knows, it could be one day uh, a lawn care service, another day it's somebody's tree service or whatnot. They're going to park there if they want to. They always do anyways. So that's just my uh, humble opinion. And your opinion is always gracefully regarded. But it's humble. <laughs> it is humble, yes. <laughs> Any other discussion? Hearing none, the chair calls for a vote that the existing timeline, time limit, no parking zone on the west side of Grayfield Road be modified to prohibit parking at all times from Weatherby Drive to South Property Line to the South Property Line of 1740 Weatherby Drive. Roll call vote, please. Don. Yes. Richard. Yes. Cindy. Yes. Al. Yes. Sunil. Yes. And Pete. Chair votes in the affirmative. The motion passes that the existing time limit no parking zone on the west side of Grayfield Road be modified to prohibit parking at all times from Weatherby Drive to the south property line of 1740 Weatherby Drive. Item number 15 on the agenda. According to the City, Count, City of Troy Traffic Committee Bylaws, Article 4, meetings. The regular meeting will be held on the third Wednesday of each month at 7.30 p.m. at the Troy City Hall, 500 West Beaver Row, Troy, Michigan. Resolution, be it resolved that the Troy Traffic Committee shall hold regular meetings in 2021 according to the following schedule at 7.30 p.m. The schedule is listed in... The minutes, basically there's a meeting every month except for August and December when we do not hold meetings. The chair recommends a vote in the affirmative and motions accordingly. Do we have a second? Second. Done. Okay. It has been moved and seconded that the Traffic Committee shall hold regular meetings in 2021 according to the schedule listed in the agenda. All those in favor, no, I can't say that. Uh, <laughs> roll call vote. Don. Yes. Richard. Yes. Cindy. Yes. Al. Yes. Sunil. Yes. Pete. Yes. Motion passes that the stated meetings in the agenda shall be adopted for 2021. <laughs> Whether or not they're held at the city hall or by um, go to meeting will be determined. Yeah, we, we may comment. be we, we may be moving to Zoom as well. So you, all, you guys all oh. get to try go to meeting and the next one may be Zoom. OK, cool. I haven't tried either. Um, but at work, in my office, we have um, uh, Skype meetings all the time. Uh, we rarely turn on the cameras to see what everybody looks like. And we are moving to um, Microsoft Teams, where my children in their employee use that quite often. And the cool thing about Microsoft Teams, because I've used it at least once, is I can put a background yep. behind well, you me. Can you can do the same you can do the same in zoom oh really okay cool yeah yep. um item 16 on the ag agenda is public comment but i believe all of our public has left um is there any public comment from it support or from eric or from the broadcast feed <clears throat> nope i'm good thank you um Hearing that there is no public comment, 
Item number 17 on the agenda is other business. Does the traffic committee itself have any other business that we would like to discuss? Yes. Richard. Um, Bill, you talk about speed bumps. Uh, when Scott, Lieutenant Scott McWilliams was on, I think you weren't, uh, I think uh, Abraham was at, we put him down on north of 17, the first street by the old post office. And we put them down for a while, and the people complained about them. They took them out. Too much yeah. noise, we say, and people didn't slow down. They were flying over them. So there should be some rubber ones up at the DPW or somewhere. No, they got rid of those. Okay. Yeah, they, it was it was cost too much to, to put them down, take them up, maintain them. So they just right. stopped doing that temporary, and they went to – John had, had that traffic harmonization program where they could go through and, and all the work that went into that that program there was the one singular speed hump that was installed so what i'm doing now is trying to make something much simpler and just use minimum criteria if you meet it then they get approved and then but the discussion right now is really how do we, how do you pay for it city of detroit's doing a huge program they're putting in like 11 million dollars worth of speed humps in 21 um, i don't remember it was like four thousand locations or something crazy like that um so it's pretty massive program. Rochester Hills has has quite a few. They, they're probably the closest neighbor to us that that uses them extensively. The Road Commission, I think, has only put them in one or two locations, and Farmington Hills, I think, has a few locations. Because I, I, back in 2016, I think somewhere around there, I, I had sent a report to the traffic committee. I think a few of the members here were on that and probably may recall, but I had did a survey of most of our neighbors and. The majority do not have any type of program like that. Farmington Hills Road Commission and Rochester Hills were the exception. So, um, but there there is uh, a desire to have something um, benefit to the city because there are pros and cons. I mean, obviously, it slows emergency response times or maybe some issues with snow plows and it may redirect traffic. But they have shown in Rochester Hills they've done before and after studies where they have slowed speeds. There are people that have concerns about the noise and. Because um, in general, most of the speeding on the streets is by a small percentage of traffic. So in kind of the highest areas that we've seen, it's it's maybe 5%, but typically it's 2 to 3%. If you're talking 400 vehicles, it's a pretty small number of cars that you're you're putting down speed humps. So you're inconveniencing 95 to 97% of the people that drive that road on a regular basis. So it's not to be taken lightly to put them in. Um so it, it is something that I guess the big benefit is if they were to go in, in an area, say like a bridge park, then there wouldn't be the need for the direct enforcement. So PD could better utilize their services for other areas that didn't have speed humps or where they spend most of their time on a major roads. So there are some, some positives to be gained from it. Um, I think there's going to be something that comes out probably later this winter, early spring. And I, I, I think what the intent would be is that we try and do, if there's enough areas that would qualify or meet minimum criteria, we would try and do a, a larger uh, program to bid them all as one job and just have like a speed hump contract and just have one contractor go to the various areas and put them down. Because uh, to try and put them in on one street, it's not gonna be really cost effective and it could end up being very expensive. So there's still lots of discussion to happen on that, and it, it's going to be at the city council level. Um, but once we get something, I will share it with, with the traffic committee so that you're aware. Because I think one of the things is you, the traffic committee may, well, probably most likely will be involved in that discussion. So say we get a speed study comes back and they meet minimum criteria, it may be that the traffic committee vets um, the placement of speed humps on a specific road and then goes to city council with a recommendation which may be the the best way to do it because then you kind of get through a lot of the discussion with the residents and you go to council with kind of a a, a resolution and recommendation to uh, if an area does indeed meet minimum criteria and, and looks to be a good fit because you don't want to put them in an area where and that's one of my concerns with lowering the 35th you've got a 30 or an 85th percentile of 35 plus that Rochester or uh, road commission uses and Farmington Hills uses, you have a correctable speed issue. So I mean, they'll, they'll lower speeds three, four, 
maybe even five miles an hour. So if you're at 31 and you lower it down to by three, four or five miles an hour, you're getting into what people normally drive and don't consider excessive speeds. Um, I think if you talk with PD, they're, when they're out doing direct enforcement, they're looking for people that are doing better than 33 or 35. It's not the people doing 28 to 31 that they consider an issue. So if you're trying to develop a policy, you want to make it something that's attainable, but also something that's realistic. And that's, that's kind of the, the trick is, is what is that, that number? Because you're always going to get blamed that you, you made that minimum criteria too high because you don't want to put them in. Well, no, that's not the case. If we, if city council truly desires to have a policy, then you need to make a policy that's attainable. And I think that's the, the key is to, to make it to a, such criteria that when you put them in, that residents actually see a difference. Because if you put them in and they don't, there's no perceived benefit and they paid for them, then that could be bad. So it's it's not something we just throw some words on a paper and roll with it. We got to, there's some thought that goes behind it. Bill, wouldn't that uh, bother the snow plows in the wintertime? Yeah, but they, they're marked. So, I mean, what they do is they just lift the blade and it, if you got a new driver, he might hit one, but um, they're, they're hot mix asphalt. So they're, they're pretty resilient. The one over on, uh, I can't, I should remember what that is. It's Walnut Hill or Butternut Hill. One of the hills over there. Um, that one is, it's still there. So it's got pavement markings, it's got signs, uh, but it, it's something that would be added into our map layers for the plow drivers. So they would know if we put them down. But it does if, if it, it does if you have a, an emergency response needed, it, it will slow those vehicles down because a fire truck or an ambulance is not going to go over them at full speed like they normally would if they're trying to get to uh, an emergency situation. This is true. In case the committee missed it, um, our Justin from the police department was nodding in the affirmative to Bill's comments. Any other other items? Uh, Al? A question uh, just about these these speed humps. If Bill, how, how will you or how will the city address once the once the all the neighborhoods discover that Troy will be putting in speed humps? You're probably gonna get thousands of requests. Everybody who ever has a speeding issue is going to want a hump. So how will you sort through all of that? <laughs> Take them as they come. <laughs> I, I, I mean, right now, if I get a call like on Bridge Park, that uh, I had gotten the call after the stop sign request was in process about uh, speeding. And the first thing we do in for a speeding concern is do a speed study. So that part of the process would not change. So if somebody wanted to has speeding concerns in their area, we will go out and do a speed study. And that would still be the first step in the, in the speed hump policy is that you would have to have a, a, a current speed, speed study to go from. So it, it's a little bit of a trick right now with the pandemic and traffic volumes the way they are. So even 400 vehicles a day might be high during the current times and there's some that feel that really you shouldn't be doing much of any speed studies right now but um yeah really it, it's going to be take them as they come I, I don't know how else to, to do it at this point but it may be that we look at some of the uh we've got the history of uh the past i think three four years of speed studies that we've done just kind of looking at how those would fall within the the proposed minimum criteria and realistically, there's only a handful of those that would meet even the lower criteria. So it's it's not like every road that we do a speed study on. Most of the speed studies we do, the 85th comes back at 28, 29. Um, very few are are in excess of 33. There's I think four of them that had uh, 85ths that were 34 or higher. Um, most of them are in the high 20s, low 30s. So it's not uh, the perception of speeding is in a lot of cases perception if you stand if in the middle of summer if you're out on on standing on the edge of curb and a big suv goes by at 30 miles an hour it feels like he's doing 45 50 miles an hour because it is a big vehicle and you're out there but if you were in your car and you were passing him in the opposite direction at 30 miles an hour and he was going at 30 miles an hour you wouldn't think either of you are driving too fast so it, there's a lot of perception and reality and what uh, what we hear and what people 
believe they see out in the field. So I just can't anticipate um, that there's going to be a, a long line of speed studies. And, well, and that's that's where the cost comes in. Does the, does the city does the city want them enough to to fund the placement, or do we put it on the residents and say if you want them, you got to pay for them? Um, that's how the policy used to be. It was a hundred percent paid for by residents. So all of a sudden now it becomes, okay, you can meet the criteria. Now you need to talk about cost. Are you willing to circulate a petition to say, yes, we want to participate and pay for um, the placement of speed humps on our streets and then locating the speed humps on a street. Cause we've had people before say, yeah, we would like speed humps, but don't put it in front of my house um, because there is noise middle of the night, the delivery truck, Amazon trucks are going <laughs> late hours now and coming with Christmas, if you had speed humps in front of your house for the next two months, I mean, there, there's a lot of delivery vehicles. They make a lot of noise when they go over those speed humps because they aren't necessarily slowing down as much as some of the others. So yeah, that's, that's, that's why. Hump. There's a speed hump right behind my house. It's a, in the parking lot, the Sheffield offices. And I can attest to that. There will be trucks, that don't know they're there in, in early morning hours. It's dark. They'll go over it. It'll be, it'll wake you up. Trust me. Yep. Yeah. And there is a difference between the speed bumps that you see in parking lots and the speed humps that we use. So humps with an H that we use and that we would use in a public road. The speed humps are about the same height, three to four inches, but they're typically 14 feet wide. And the speed bump is a foot, two foot maybe in width. So it's a more abrupt, and it, it is definitely something that if you hit a speed bump with a B, you know you hit something. A speed hump is more, some people will call them tables. Uh, it's more gradual, but it's still a, a vertical deflection. So the same thing I was talking about with horizontal deflection and parked cars. You either deflect up or you deflect horizontally. So it's more gentle in nature, but it is still a a deflection so it is it has been shown to decrease speeds and really the key is is a speed that is correctable and rochester hills is, seems to have had success with their six mile an hour plus and the, the reason they use that is because they allow speed humps on on other roads besides residential ours would be residential only so it would only be 25 so if we went with the minimum six over that would be 31 and that's where the speed limit comes from okay um Past members of the Troy Traffic Committee have been professional traffic engineers, and they have mentioned that there are other speed calming devices, such as illusions that are actually painted on the street. Yeah. Has the city considered any of those? No. Okay. No, I, and I've seen that they use a lot of them in Europe. And I mean, in areas like ours is if you those types of, of pavement markings where it looks like there's a pothole or it looks like it's a, a 3D image of something. Yeah, they, they do show to a slow down speed, zigzag lines and anything that's different than what you would normally. Essentially, that's the idea. Anything that's different, people will pay more attention to. But you get three inches of snow while well, your pavement markings are gone. So very true. Um, so it's not something we've looked at in the other other chicanes and street narrowings. And there's a lot more that goes into those. And it's a lot more disruptive. I mean, speed humps are a pretty simple solution if indeed you have a correctable speed issue. So that's that's kind of why we've leaned that way. And that's kind of where the, the traffic harmonization program previously would Typically, when they looked at options, that was because it's it is one of the cheaper options, and and it people can still pass both ways. You don't have the the one way streets and, and those types of things. So it's not we're not in a area where our residential streets have three four thousand vehicles a day. You're talking any most of them are the four to six to eight to thousand on the high end. So it's it's not a ton of vehicles, and so you're. The vehicles that may be driving at faster speeds as a percentage of the whole is, is pretty small. Okay. Any other other business? Bill? Yeah. Has this county talked to you about labor noise where the apartments are? Uh, back of the theater? 
I know the first apartment facing Libertynoise is full already. There must be 20, 25 cars in there. I mean, if they build the whole thing out, there are 500 apartments. That's 2,000. That's 1,000 cars a day coming out of there. Uh, I guess what's your question? Are they going to put a light there or are they just going to study it? And that because everybody really gets a lot of traffic. Uh, I mean, they're south, meaning south when of, it's, no, they're not going to put a light there because it's too close to Maple. I think they're going to have a problem then. Well, it's it was the, it's the old FedEx site and that had hundreds of trucks a day coming out for FedEx. So, I mean, they had more trucks coming out at one time than probably the apartments will release at one time. It'll be spread out over, say, a peak hour from 6 to 9 in the morning. And that's the thing is not everybody leaves at the same time. And now with the pandemic and the work from home, the, the peak hour is getting more more spread if there is, even is one. I mean, even when I've come into to, to the city, it, the, my drive in on the expressway is... I've come in any time from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. and traffic is pretty non-existent. I mean, it's it has not come back yet, so it's it is something. But when they look at signals, they're looking at one of the criteria is how close that is to essentially another signal because you can't you don't want them too close. Um, Livernois is a five-lane road already, so it's there's not a lot of widening to be done there, and there is a back entrance off of Park, I believe, to that site as well. Right. Not saying it's impossible, but it's not something that I'm aware of at this time. Any other other business? I have another Cindy. question for Bill. Um, do you have any updates on 14 Mile and Big Beaver constructions? <laughs> well, they're, Just they're, curious. They're, yeah, they're they're trying to get to the end game, and then we got the big storm this weekend. So DTE has. Uh, every one all of their crews are on storm duty right now and uh like big beaver primarily that they are waiting on detroit edison to provide or energize the signals so they cannot get edison out there and edison it sounds like is the earliest they could get out there is this friday and that's probably unlikely as well because they still i don't know how many thousands of people still don't have power so um, they still are hopeful that big beaver ddi will be complete and open before the end of the year 14 mile they're not sure 14 miles still questionable but big beaver ddi they they're doing everything in their power to get that one open here before the end of the year so originally all, all of that major roads and ramps and everything were supposed to be open um but now they've, they've run into the issues with detroit edison and just trying to get things done okay thank you any other other business With any luck, I hope to be able to drive by December and maybe even actually walk. Hopefully I can walk and then I can dr drive. Um, for those who don't know, I fell off my roof on August 2nd and then had been had surgery on my femur, um, which I broke in my right leg and have been on toe touch for the last 16 weeks where I could not put any weight on my right leg. And just this week, I started, actually, a week ago, tomorrow, I started physical therapy. And i am been walking on a walker, um, so I can't walk yet. Um, so hopefully by December, I'm walking and then driving again. So any other other business? Wish you well, Pete. Thank you. Thank you. Wish you well, Pete. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And if sorry, guys, my battery is not going to be drained, so I might be just forcefully evicted. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, a few of you may actually have seen me wince in pain because I get shots of of just flashes of pain that just come and go, and it's like, really, I didn't do anything. But anyways. Um, any other other business? Nope, all good. Going once, going twice. Then the chair recommends that the our session is in adjournment. 
we shall talk in January. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a good one, everybody. See you. Take care.